Good morning and happy Vlogmas day 20. Are we at 20? Oh my god, 20! <laughs> It is currently 10.30. I had a nice shower this morning and then I just put on brows, blush, and mascara to look a little bit put together even though I'm still in my robe and my hair's still in the towel. But I've been spending the last little bit um, partaking in the Create and Cultivate Future You Festival. It's like a digital, free digital conference. So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I've been to a few of their things before. They always have great speakers, great information. So I just went to this seminar by Kelly Robinson about how to make your space um, jive better, like with your spirit and stuff. Definitely enticed me to deal with the entire disaster that's behind me, but that will be a project for next weekend over winter break. Um, so I'm kind of on a break right now from that. The next session that I want to go to isn't until 11.30. So I'm going to edit yesterday's video, my everyday makeup routine. And then I'll check back in with you guys. But also for today's video, it's going to be somewhat of a vlog. But we are also going to be talking, rating, and reviewing all 10 <laughs> books that I read this year. Y'all, my mind is blown right now. Look at these amazing women that are on the screen right now. They all own their own businesses. This is, uh, she is involved in Outdoor Voices. She's involved in The Every Girl, Wonder Beauty, and Shared Media. Like, literal powerhouse babes. I'm, I just can't. It's so cool. Today's segment brought to you by my parents' bookshelves. Actually... Okay, so Goodreads is this thing every year where if you track your books, they tell you pages read, number of books read, your average pages, and things like that. So I'm just going to talk through this and then we'll talk about each of the books. So I read 10 books this year, which really is not kind of what I would have wanted knowing that there was a pandemic, but also knowing that there is a pandemic, there's not much you can do. I was super busy this year so not a lot of books read but some good books read most of the books i read this year were good so i read 2855 pages my longest book was the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins and my shortest book was the sword thief by peter Lorangis. so an average book length that i read this year was 285 pages i read some really short books this year i think that's why the most popular book that I read this year was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. So 495,000 people also read this book. And my least popular book was Choose Your Own Disaster uh, by Dana Schwartz and 7,000 people read that. My average rating for my reads was 4.3 stars. So that is pretty good out of 5. And my highest rated book on Goodreads was... The first one I'm going to talk about, um, which is Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. So I have the copies of the books um, of the ones I have in person, and then I'll just talk about the ones that I have and put the picture here. So first up, we have Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Do -do -do. I gave this book five stars. Basically, this book is a series of essays all discussing the same issue which is that we as humans don't really know how to speak to strangers so essentially there are a bunch of um situations that are talked about um bernie madoff amanda knox sylvia plath jerry sandusky um, and sandra bland and basically the discussion is about the fact that we don't know how to read people that we don't know so gladwell argues with the tools and strategies we use to make sense of people we don't know something is wrong and because we don't know how to talk to strangers we are inviting con conflict and misunderstanding in ways that have profound effect on our lives so essentially a lot of the stories in this book there are a lot of miscommunications that led to detrimental consequences and um it is eye-opening especially with the black lives matter movement this year there's a lot of talk about police brutality in here and it like literally opened my eyes to the fact that like the police are basically like given orders to be 
as aggressive as they are, especially in the U.S. end. So this is a really good read. Gave it five out of five stars, and it was my first read for the year. Choose Your Own Disaster by Dana Schwartz. Um, this one is really funny and cute. What did I, I rated it four stars and it's a memoir personality quiz, mostly true and completely honest look at one young woman's attempt to find herself and all of the above. So it's basically just like a bunch of chapters about this girl living her life, but it's kind of a choose your own adventure because like, here, for example, uh, here's a section of the book. Congrats, you made it to living in New York City. Aside from living in an apartment with no central air but endless takeout containers of white rice in your fridge, what are you excited for? You read each thing, you choose, and it takes you to a different section of her life and a different, like, outcome. So, I loved this book. She is such a good writer. It's hilarious. Um, basically, it is a... It's about the millennial experience and modern feminism and how the easy advice of you can do anything you want is actually pretty difficult when it seems like there are so many possible versions of yourself you could be. So this one I really related to. Um, she's older than I am, but still, like, it's hard trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. So I thought this was really good. I got it at a local bookstore for like five bucks. Um, definitely a good, easy read that makes you think. So that's the next one that I read and then I'm pretty sure the pandemic hit after that. Yes, and in order to regain some semblance of control, I read four books from my childhood um, from the 39 Clues series. I read Maze of Bones, One False Note, uh, The Sword Thief, and then Beyond the Grave and then I gave up. <laughs> um, so if you don't know what the 39 Clues series is, it was a series that was written when I was a kid um, and each of the books is written by a different author but they're all part of the same series. So Maze of Bones is the first one and it's written by Rick Riordan who wrote the Percy Jackson series. Um, one False Note is written by Gordon Corman, he's written a ton of books for kids. Um, Peter Lorangis wrote The Sword Thief, he has a ton, and Jude Watson, Beyond the Grave. She also has like so many amazing series that I also read when I was a kid. So the premise of this series is that um, there is the, the, this family, the Cahill family, and they're one of the most powerful families in human history. But um, the two main characters, Dan and Amy, they don't know that until their aunt dies. And then they get um, invited to go on this quest called the 39 Clues, basically racing against every other member of their family that chose to do it to find like the answer to the universe basically. Um, so they travel all over the world, each book is set in a different place and they run into all these members of their family and it's very similar to like the Hogwarts style of fandom. Um, like there are four houses, the Janice, Ekaterina, Lucian, and Thomas that were all made by the original members of the family and then each family like fits into that and they all subscribe, they all have like the same, you know, the, the Janice are like the artsy ones, the Lucians are like the cunning ones, Thomas is athletic I think, and Ekaterina is like smart. So basically Dan and Amy don't know where they fit in and they're following these clues all around the world trying not to get killed off by their other family members that are also looking for it. So. I believe there were 11 or 12 books in this series and I did finish it as a kid, but these were the first four. These were the only ones that I read this year. I think because then I must have found a different uh, book that interested me. So yes, I believe that the reason that I stopped reading those books is because my most anticipated read of the year came out. And I don't know where this book is. Like I did buy it from Indigo, so it's somewhere, but um, the book is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the Hunger Games prequel. It follows President Snow through his childhood. And I think I was honestly like one of the only people who actually liked this book. I had super high hopes for it, but before I was able to get my hands on it, a lot of people were like, this is awful. Um, but I think one thing as a reader that sets me apart from a lot of the people who are probably reading these books was that I love, if, if I'm obsessed with a time um, 
So like when I was a Harry Potter, like hardcore Harry Potter fan, I would have read anything that they released to get more information on this world because I wished that I was like there. So for me, Hunger Games is like the most interesting dystopian in the YA dystopia. Um, I did like Divergent. I found that world interesting, but not as interesting as Pan Am. So basically the way I put it is that I would read like 73 different Hunger Games books to read one about each um, uh, year of the Hunger Games. Um, so for me, I just like craved all the additional details and I thought this book was super well written. I really enjoyed the characters. I loved seeing how the um, Hunger Games kind of morphed from its near inception post the war in the capital till Katniss's um, years. Like it was just super interesting. I also do love a good villain and a good villain backstory. So that's partly why, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. I would read it again. I think anyone who likes The Hunger Games should read it, but I'm sorry that a lot of people didn't because I really liked it. Only three books left. So the next book that I read was Son of a Trickster by Eden Robinson. And I think I gave this book four stars. This book, I've never been more torn reading a book. So this is for the book club that I'm in. Um, I don't think I would have picked it up otherwise, except that they did just make it into a TV series called Trickster. Yeah, um, I loved the first half of this book, and then I hated the second half, and then like three pages at the end compelled me to like maybe read the rest of the, this is a trilogy, but I don't know. Um, I'm not really a fan of supernatural elements or fantasy. I draw the line at Harry Potter. The if you think it's a fantasy, that's fine. I don't think it's a fantasy. Um, this book was really interesting before it got to the halfway mark and then a bunch of supernatural elements came in and I did not like it and I didn't want to finish reading it. Basically, the story is of this kid named Jared. He lives in northern BC. Um, he is Aboriginal. His dog just died and then Basically, like, these supernatural creatures kind of follow him around and say that he's, like, a descendant of the tricksters and, like, witches. And he doesn't know, like, really who his family is except for his mother. He's not, like, super happy, but these things keep, like, kind of w winding their way into his life. But he's also stoned most of the time, so he doesn't really know. It's really a nice read. I think it's eye-opening to a lot of the struggles of northern um, Canadian First Nations and First Nations people as a whole uh, but I did not like how quickly it turned to like full-on magic and witches and like tricksters that's just not for me and I don't have any interest in watching the show so I gave that one four stars I think on Goodreads I think I gave it three and a half in my notebook you can't do half stars on Goodreads okay we're almost at the end the next book that I read I don't have these. I returned it to the library. It is called um, the Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore. I talked about it a bit during Vlogmas because I started it this December. This book is basically about a girl who works at a bookstore and she has all these people who frequent this bookstore and they're called the book frogs. Um, one night um, one of the book frogs that she's really close to kills himself and he's found hanging in the bookstore with a photo of her as a child in his pocket and so basically it's a mystery to find out why he killed himself how he knows her backstory because nobody that she's friends with actually knows like her childhood and then like reconnecting with people from her childhood and you solve this mystery that impacted her as a child i don't love mysteries although i really enjoyed this book and i definitely would um maybe read more mysteries now, especially if this guy writes it. Oh, it's written by Matthew Sullivan. Um, it's just one of those mysteries where like you think that none of the characters are related, but then they like all intertwine, which I like that a lot. And it was a pretty quick read, a lot about books, a little bit of murder, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> so I definitely recommend that book. I gave it five stars. And lastly is the book that I just finished reading last night. This book is called The Truants and it's written by Kate Weinberg. Love this book so much. Um, I think I described it to some people as like feeling, or on the blog maybe, 
feeling that Taylor Swift had like read this book and then written Folklore and Evermore because like the albums fit perfectly with this. Um, I gave this book five stars. It's kind of a mystery, but mostly fiction. It talks a lot about Agatha Christie. So there is some mystery elements. Basically, it's about this girl who goes off to college to like meet this to study with this woman that she's admired since she read this professor's book, The Truants. Um, so the author of The Truants within the book is the lady she goes to college to meet, but then she gets entangled with these other people and she starts to realize that like nothing's really as it seems and they go on all of these like wild college adventures until destruction basically befalls like all of them and nobody is who she thought they were and yeah, um... Yeah, it's real. <laughs> I don't know. I really, really liked it. The characters were compelling. The plot was interesting. I, there were so many plot twists where I was just like, ooh, I did not see that coming. Again, another one where you don't realize how all the characters are interconnected, interconnected until the end. Really good. Definitely would advise picking this one up. So those are the 10 books I read this year. If you want to see more books, book like videos or blog posts, let me know down below. Um, and yeah, let's just get back to the regular scheduled program. So I'm just watching the last session that I wanted to see from this conference. It's all about Squarespace, Squarespace, because my Squarespace site will be coming in the new year and I wanted to get any last few tips while I make the rest of the site before it goes live. Um, but I did want to just check in because we've been talking a lot about holiday movies and I decided to watch one that wasn't on my list and it is called The Happiest Season with Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie. Oh, I loved her in other things. What is her name? Mackenzie Davis. And it's really cute. I love it so much so far, but I feel like it's so weird seeing Christmas movies that were made like pre-pandemic because they're going to all these Christmas parties and like I just miss it. There was one we go to every year. It would be happening tomorrow if it was happening and it's like a caroling party. We see all the same people, you know, you get to dress up and look cute and like I'm kind of missing that connection and that like incentive to look stylish <laughs> during this pandemic. But anyway, um, we just ordered in food from The Goose, which is a local restaurant and we're gonna watch Elf, and then we're very behind, well, no, we missed the last night of Hanukkah, nobody was here, so now we are gonna do that and open the rest of the remaining presents that have just been delivered. I think I'm gonna give my parents their gifts tonight. We're gonna watch Elf, so. <laughs> Thank you. 